Hi guys! So, I'm going to be doing a little craft with you today. Um, you're gonna start it and then you can take your time on it because it's supposed to be like creative and special. Um, and it's based off of the read aloud that we read the first Christmas tree. So, um, you have that white paper and you, you're gonna need to use it the long way. So not the wide way, the long way. Um, so if you want to get that out, we're going to start. And I have mine here. Mine isn't as big as your guys' because it won't fit like for me videotaping, which it doesn't matter too much anyway. But it's a regular sheet of paper that I'm going to be drawing with you. Okay. So you're going to need a pencil and a piece of paper. So based off of the read aloud story, the little, the first Christmas tree, um, you, I didn't show you any of the pictures because I want you to picture this Christmas tree on your own without being able to see what the tree looked like. I did the same thing for the kids in the classroom because it kind of makes it more fun that way to see like what you think the first Christmas tree looked like. And because there was details in the book, like it was little, um, green, it was bare. There wasn't very many like pine needles and stuff like that. Um, it kind of gives you a good idea of how you can start your project, but so I do want it to like fill up, you know, a good portion of your paper, even though it says it's a little a little tree um but we're just gonna pretend that's a little tree but we want it to be able to be seen on the paper so anyway first um i kind of drew it along with them sort of but i thought it would be easier if i could do it with you guys uh to show kind of what i'm talking about especially because i was there in the classroom to talk them through it for the most part but Again, the ideas should come from yourself because it's your idea of what this little Christmas tree looked like or this little tiny tree. Um, yeah, so it's kind of just that kind of craft. Anyways, so I'm going to start with my pencil towards the bottom of the paper. And a lot of the other students, not a lot, but about half of them, they had about like a, a small hill or ground on the bottom of the paper, which is fine. Uh, you can do whatever you'd like to do. I'm just gonna draw the tree right on the bottom, starting without any like grass or anything. Uh, I'm just gonna have the tree there. And when I draw, I like to make really light strokes and I like to like, I don't know, kind of flick my pencil when I'm doing it to get like a sketch more. That way if I mess up, it's easier for me to erase. And like the tree trunk is bigger at the very bottom and it gets slimmer as we go to the top. I'll show you kind of what mine looks like after. Okay, so I started with the trunk kind of a little bit bigger at the bottom. And then as it gets bigger to the top, it gets that pointed part because we're kind of gonna be drawing um, branches and stuff like that that will eventually be filled in with pine needles. But this doesn't look like a tree, obviously, but it 
is the base, I guess, skeleton part of the tree. And um, as we keep going, it'll look more like it. So most of the kids in the classroom did make a point at the top. Um, it is kind of confusing at first. A lot of them like to make a square because that looks like a log, but try to make a point just because uh, we have to draw branches based off of our tree and our tree isn't, or remember our tree is a f like a fir tree because um, it's a Christmas tree. So, okay, so now I'm gonna draw some branches and I like to start from the top of the tree when I draw branches so I can see how much space I have left. And remember, ours is a Christmas tree, so we don't want it to be like, um, or like a maple tree. We want it to be a pine tree, so the branches aren't very big. They're, they hold a lot of needles, but there's not a ton of them. There's not a lot of twigs. There's just that the parts that hold the pine needles. So while I'm making the branches, I make them kind of pointed as well. Um, it'll make a lot more sense as we start painting it. But we have a small Christmas tree, so we don't want to make our branches too big. And the branches are bigger at the parts of the tree where they connect to, and then they get smaller, kind of like the top of our Christmas tree did. so far. So then you keep filling in branches um, until you get towards the bottom of the tree, just like as if you were picking a tree and going to cut it down. Um, the reason why we're making it more spaced out is because our Christmas tree in our story was a little Christmas tree and this Christmas tree was pretty bare. Um, so make sure that you keep it in mind, we aren't making like a Christmas tree that you'd see outside, we're making the Christmas tree that we see in our mind based on the story. And since we know those details from the story as being little and bare and a really small tree and, you know, that tree tried to tried to see the other, past the other big trees around it, and it couldn't. Um, so we kind of have to base our character off of what we read. Even though you can't see the picture of the tree, um, that picture is in your mind. And that's why I'm drawing it along with you to help you kind of figure that out. But just keep drawing the branches and then we'll come back and we'll do the um, paint part that I gave you. It's that green paint and you have a fork and then I'll show you what you're gonna be doing with the fork. 